Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to True for Thought Podcast. I'm going to read to you out of Genesis chapter 17, and um, there's so much to unpack here. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to keep it between five to seven minutes, but hope it encourages you. It's a small devotion, you know, and it's practical, even until today. All right, let's pray and let's get into our study. Heavenly Father, we pray for your word. We pray that you would open up our eyes to your scriptures, Lord. May your scriptures come to life, Lord Jesus. Uh, give us imagery, Lord. Give us um, give us practical application, Lord, to see what you want to speak to us, Lord. Give us clarity. Give me clarity, Lord. I'm just your vessel, ready to be used by you. And uh, open up our eyes, Lord. We confess any sin before you, Lord. Forgive us if we've hurt anybody, transgress against you or anybody else, Lord. Wash us and cleanse us and create in us a clean heart and a steadfast spirit, Lord. Because we want to hear what the Spirit has to say, Lord. So speak to our hearts and draw us near to you. And it's in your holy name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right. Uh, so Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. Okay. And when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. couple things. Abram right um he's 99 years old now god had promised him we got to do a recap god promised him and sarai before she became sarah sarai and that he would bring them a son right now now it's interesting that they're they're waiting, right? They're waiting for the promise. In fact, in fact, uh, Sarah <laughs> took it under her own hands and under her own hands, and and Abraham followed. You know, he's like, oh, why don't you have, um, you know, why don't you make love to my maidservant? You know, and Abraham's like, okay, all right, yes, ma'am. You know, but um, they did that in the flesh. You know, God didn't tell them to do that, and because of that, you know. Through their, through her womb, through his, um, through Abraham's seed, um, in fact, it was prophesied that the people um, coming out of Ishmael would actually be a nation um, rising against one another, and they cannot um, come together. You know, and that it says in the King James version, excuse my language, it says that they will be a wild ass of a man. They will be wild. They will be like heathen, just crazy, you know? And and we see that even now within the Middle East. That's Bible prophecy being fulfilled. But yet, they did it in the flesh, right? But yet, God, it, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness in chapter 12, I believe. Um, no, yeah, chapter 12. And so, um, I love verse uh, chapter 15, verse 1, which I want to read. It says, After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceedingly great reward. God is our reward. And God promised him, you know, and, and he says, If I say something, shall I not do it? Um, I love what the Bible says, Let God be true and every man alive. God, when he makes a promise to us, he will fulfill it. Okay, we need to keep that in mind and and think about it. Sometimes we think God, oh, you know, we get disappointed sometimes. I know I do. Like, man, God didn't work according to to my timeline and it can just break us, right? We could be discouraged of how long am I going to wait, Lord? How long do I have to ask, you know? How many times I have to ask for this prayer request, you know, whether if it's a job or, or a career or something entirely different, you know? A wife, whatever, whatever it is. We can be like, how long, O oh Lord? You know, how long? You know? And God, I find that God does it uh, to surprise us, you know? He likes surprising us, you know? And ironically, we like surprises. But, I don't know, for some reason, I don't like when the Lord surprises me, you know? I'm just like, I want it now, please! You know? But, he's like... Mm -hmm. He's like, I love you too, <laughs> you know. He's like, oh. <laughs> you know, we could be, we could be kind of like, uh, yes, I love you too, Lord, but I, I want, I want this, you know. And God's like, uh, of course, he's, I love you, my little child. <laughs> you know, he's like holding us. You know, it's true though. You know, we need to be caught up in God's love. Maybe we be caught up in God's love. Okay, keep that in mind and keep focused that God 
we, God's going to keep his word to us. If he promised something, he will keep it, okay? He, and and we have to keep in mind this life, we're just sojourners. We're just passing through. So easy to get clingy to things in this life, you know? It's just a fact. But Abraham believed God, you know? And think about it, you know? We think like, oh, God has to work according to our timeline. If he doesn't, it's like, God, it's, it's not going to work out, you know? But we need to trust the Lord that he has the best solution. He has the best plan for our lives, you know? That's a hard one, though. That's a tough pill to swallow. That's that's what I'm learning. And and I was listening to Jason Lyle, and it was, it was kind of comforting to hear to hear another brother struggle with the same thing. He's like, oh, he's like I can't wait till I'm perfected, you know? I'm like, huh. I was like, I guess I'm not the only one, you know? It's like, I want to be this, you know, but I'm this right now, you know? Um, but we have to keep that saying, right? The saying goes, I may not be where I want to be, but I'm not who I used to be, right? So Abraham waited, right? And God appears to him at 99. He says, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God. The almighty God. I am Jehovah God. I am Jehovah He's Jehovah, and that is his name. And who is who also is Jehovah in the New Testament? Jesus. Jesus is our Jehovah, right? He's he's our Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shikhnu, Jehovah our banner. He loves us, and, and he's there every step of the way. He's, he's whatever we need him to be at the moment. If you need a friend, he's your friend. If you need someone to cry on, he's next to you. If you need peace, he'll give you your peace. He'll give you the peace that he promises to us. And then he says, walk before me and be thou perfect. He says, walk. We need to keep that in mind. Not running, but walking. We could be so caught up in running, running, right? Running the risk. But enjoying the journey. Enjoying, enjoying the journey. That's a hard part for us. We're just, we just want the next thing. I want that. I want that, you know? God, what about this blessing? I want this blessing, you know? But may we be caught up in just enjoying the journey, being steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Okay? And he says, be thou perfect. That's an interesting term. Some people believe, oh, we got to be perfect. Once you become a believer, you know, you're perfect. No, 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 you're not, you know? Um, you're not perfect. And uh, and if and usually it's the single men that are saying that, you know, and it's like, oh, I'm perfect. No, no, wait until you get married. You know, they're going to let you know real quick that you're not perfect. You know, um, we'll, we'll just ask your wife <laughs> after you're married, you know, and stuff and see if you are perfect. But you're, nobody can be perfect on this side of heaven. And only one can be perfect. And that is Jesus Christ. So it's not talking about being perfect on the side of heaven in regard to moral absolute it's talking about being complete in god in fact the term perfect uh, is um is also used within um matthew five forty eight when jesus told the people he said therefore be perfect just as your heavenly father in heaven is perfect it can also be translated therefore be complete mature full maturity Therefore, be complete just as their Heavenly Father in Heaven is complete. May we, we are complete in Christ, guys. So may we be complete. May we live out. Being complete, resting in Jesus Christ. That's what it means to be incomplete. Resting in God. Resting in the grace of God. Okay? We are complete in Jesus. We have everything that we ever need. In Ephesians, I believe, or Philippians, it says, Praise the God of our Father through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has bestowed upon us every spiritual gift in the heavenly places. God has given us everything to per pertaining to life and godliness in this side of heaven. That's just a fact. We have everything that we need, okay? Everything. We have his word, right? We have communication to him. Okay, we can talk to him daily. We have access to the throne room of grace. We don't understand that. We take advantage of that. That's why our prayer life just, a lot of us are just lame. I wish, you know, I try to pray two hours a day, you know. That's a struggle even over yourself. And, and I want to do more than that, you know. But we have access to the throne room of grace. Jesus tore the veil in two. So 
may we run to Jesus, okay? Everything. We, he has given us every spiritual gift in the heavenly places. But we need to be in his word. We need to abide in the vine, okay? And, and God, reveal yourself to me. Open up my eyes to see. So practically speaking, we are complete in Jesus. Don't ever forget that. You have everything that you need, okay? There's nothing that we're lacking, even though sometimes I know I can. Sometimes we can disagree with that. Like, I'm not complete. I don't, you know, I don't have a wife. You know, I don't have this. I don't have that. You know, if only I had this, I would be complete. Mm, no, that's not true. Not true. We're always looking for that next thing, right? Pastor Chuck will tell the story real quick, and then I'll end with this. Pastor Chuck was, um, it was kind of funny. He went to go see these men and these philosophers, these intellectual men, right? These atheists, and, of America, you know, and um, and they're all arguing, oh, you know, uh, oh, this and this, you know, and then one of the girls is like, can you guys shut up, you know, she's like, we have to hear you guys every weekend, you know, every weekend, can you just let this man speak, and Pastor Chuck is just praying, God, he's like, I am so sorry for disobeying my wife, I will never leave my wife alone, okay, I don't think this is going to get anywhere, I'm still I'm stuck. I I I repent, Lord. I I left my wife alone at home. He says, and he says, um, um, please get me out of here, Lord. <laughs> and he's just he's just stuck in the pot, and they're turning, you know, and they don't be quiet and shut up, you know. And then finally, and then they say, okay, okay, and like, all right, we'll be quiet. And he says, and he and he just says one thing. And may we get to this point, okay, the believer. Okay, especially when we're young, we're, we tend to be caught up, you know, just moving on to the next thing. I want a, I want a wife. I want kids. <laughs> you know, parents will tell you otherwise. You know, I want this, I want that. Like, you don't know what you're asking for, <laughs> you know, type thing. And, you know, they have the wisdom they would know, and we should take their wisdom um, for sure. But, but really, and, and they looked at him and was like, okay, all right, go ahead, speak, Pastor Chuck. And Pastor Chuck, and, and may we get to this point. And this is what I want to get to the point. And I believe once we get to this point, I believe it. If we're going to get to this point. Like, yes, it makes sense, Lord. I'm complete in you, Jesus. And he's like, yes, yes, you finally get it, my child. Time to come home. <laughs> we're going to get raptured up, you know. Time to go once we finally get it. That's just a fact. That's why we're still on this earth because we don't get it. <laughs> that's the funny part. But but the, the getting part is this. And he says, I am complete in Christ. I have everything that I need. And all of them were like, they just looked at him and they're on their chairs and they're on the edge of their chairs. And it's like, whoa, they did not expect that. They did not expect that. They were just like, whoa. And they just started listening. He just, he went on from there. Just preaching the gospel and just how Jesus can satisfy and quench every thirst, everything. That's what separates us from every other religion. And I pray that we will be able to talk about it. That's a hard saying, right? Godliness with contentment is great gain. Paul said, I learned to be content in all states, in many and in few. When I'm hungry, when I'm sick, whatever. Whatever it is, I learned to be content in all states. And then that's where that famous verse is, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So, we are complete in Jesus. That's a hard saying. I'm preaching to myself right now because I still don't get it. I still don't get that he's enough for my life. He, that's just a fact. And I learned this lesson on early on. And I see it time and time again. One thing after another. I just want that one thing. I, I want that. I want that. I want this. I want that. I want this. And, and, and just... And I move on to the next thing. And just, it's not satisfying anymore, you know? I have this nice watch here, you know? It's just another thing, you know? It's whatever. It's just, and I want the next thing, you know? I want, oh, I want the GoPro. I want this. I want that, you know? I, I, I want an e-bike, whatever. I want a new car. I want this and that, you know? There's never-ending things that we could desire. But we are complete in Jesus, okay? I pray... That we would get that, okay? May we get that. May we meditate. Lord, help me to be content. Lord, help me to reach full maturity as Abraham. We are complete in Jesus. That's just a fact. We're complete in him. 
Okay? I'm going to end with this. I'm going to end with prayer. Okay? Let's pray. And then I'll conclude with that. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, that you would help us to be content, to be satisfied with the things that you have given us. We have so much, Lord. I, I look around in my room, Lord, and I just have so many things, Lord, in my room. Just a lot of things. And, and a lot of it just... And I look back even in my past life, Lord, you know, a couple years, Lord, how the things that I bought, Lord, it just wasn't satisfying. And I wasted money, Lord wasted. Lord, help us, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom, Lord Jesus. That's what I want, Lord. It's a hard understanding to really be content, Lord, but I pray that we would get to that. We will learn to be content and satisfied in you, Jesus, because we have everything that we need, and that is you, Jesus. So teach us that. Draw us near to you and have your way with us. And it's in your holy name, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. I love you, but most important, he loves you. Follow and subscribe for more. Take care. And I went over 16 minutes, <laughs> but worth it though. God bless. Take care.